Five out of five. Holy shit, The Walking Dead is back. My god. I want you to put the word out there that we back up. So I just finished watching the last episode of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, the brand new miniseries, which brings back a Ricky Dicky Doodah Grimes, who has been missing from The Walking Dead universe since season nine of The Walking Dead, which I believe aired all the way back in 2018. And it also brings back Michonne, who has also been gone since I believe season 10 of The Walking Dead, which aired in 2020. Now, if you didn't know, these characters were written off and they were supposed to be brought back in movies, movies that essentially got canceled. And if you are a big Walking Dead fan, which someone like me, who is a massive Walking Dead fan, we held out hope for years that we would eventually see these characters come back. We didn't know if it would be the movies, or the end of the regular show, or in some other spinoff, but we held out hope. We held on to every little tease, every little glimmer of hope, every little nitpick of easter eggs they left for us to see when and where these characters would show up. Where has Rick been for eight years? What's going on? And finally we got this show, and my god, it did something that is almost impossible to do in Hollywood these days. It lived up to every expectation that fans had for this show. This show was everything we wanted the return of Rick Grimes to be, and maybe even more. I loved every single second of it. I, I cannot talk about this show in this video without talking about spoilers. So if you want just the base review, go watch it. Five out of five. If you love The Walking Dead, go watch it. If you haven't watched The Walking Dead in years and want to try to get back into it, Check it out. This was the best season of Walking Dead television, probably since the golden days. Like, I'm talking the season six days. But we're gonna get into spoilers. I'm gonna go episode by episode. I'm just gonna give you my thoughts and everything. So The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, starts with Rick's story. The first episode follows Rick Grimes from when he was taken by this new group called the CRM. Actually, they are the Civic Republic. Essentially, what this community is, you have the city of Philadelphia, which is made up of hundreds of thousands of civilians, and they are living in this government and this society called the Civic Republic. Outside the city, there's this military ran by John. John Locke from Lost, who is so great in this show, and this military is shady and creepy and terrible and very mean. Not in your typical standard Walking Dead bad guy types of ways, and you know, in one look, this group, the CRM, they're actually very nice. They're giving Rick a nice place to stay, they're giving him opportunities, they're, you know, they're giving him a job, but they're not letting him leave. And they give a really great reason as to why Rick hadn't been able to get back to his family after all these years. In the first episode, we see Rick trying to kind of struggling with his current predicament and trying to get away. He even cuts off his fucking arm to try to get away in the first episode. But every time they stop him, they will not let him leave to protect the secrecy of their community, even though they're in Philadelphia and have giant windmills. And anybody that walks past that area is going to see that they have a gigantic community. In Philadelphia, it doesn't really make sense now, does it? But either way, they make it pretty clear that after all these years, Rick had not been able to leave because the group knew about Alexandria. If he were to leave and make it back to Alexandria, this gigantic military that is a legitimate army, they are a legitimate fighting force, would kill everybody at Alexandria, including his kids. That is a good reason as to why Rick never got back for eight years. It's perfectly written, it makes a lot of sense, and then you get to the end of the episode, and Rick is reunited with Michonne. at this weird point where Rick has finally kind of accepted his role in the CRM and kind of Stockholm Syndrome has adapted to being a part of this group, and now here comes Michonne, and it, it just opens up a great series. You get into episode two, and we sort of see Michonne's journey, how she joined up with this weird group, and then that whole group kind of got gassed and killed, and then Michonne found Rick after years of looking for him, and now she's in the CRM and has to find a way to get Rick out, get herself out, kind of deprogram Rick from his CRM programming and, you know, save the world and get back to their kids. And this series is just so, it hits on every beat through a lot of these early episodes. You get all of the great acting stuff. You get scenes with Rick and some of the new characters like, like Okafor, like this scene right here. And yields A's and fucking B's. Some goddamn good soldier with nothing! You get great big moments, drama, fantastic performances, the reunions we've been looking for with Rick and Michonne, which are so beautiful. The CRM is an actual threat, and you actually understand why this predicament is so much bigger and worse than anything else they had dealt with in the show so far. And as the show progresses, and you start seeing Michonne kind of get involved in the group, and you see Rick's position in the group, and then they bring back Jadis! who's so good in this show. We kind of got teases of Jadis in the show, uh, I don't remember what it was called. I think The World Beyond, that other spinoff Walking Dead show that wasn't very good. We got glimpses of this dark version of Jadis who is so kind of connected to the CRM and so in it that she's just a bitch. She's so nasty, but she's so good. And like the actress is so amazing and the character is so terrifying, but also hilarious with a terrible haircut. You're a hero. 
with a shit haircut. And her relationship with Rick just makes so much sense and how she kind of confronts Rick and Michonne is so great. Of course, we get episode four, which was written by Denai Guerrero, who plays Michonne, and it is one of the most beautiful episodes in the whole series. The whole episode is just essentially Michonne and Rick. They get kind of lost in this uh, weird inventor's house thing. They get jump out of a helicopter. Everybody thinks they're dead and they're just kind of hanging out in this helicopter. And Rick's like, I gotta go back. We gotta go back to the CRM. You have to go home. This is ridiculous. I can't leave. And Michonne's like, you have to leave because because car. Yeah, it's essentially what happens in the episode, but it's beautiful. It's beautifully acted. It's amazing. And it shows what the show is really going for, trying to study this uh, kind of idea of how we become adapted to our environments and we sort of kill our past when we get trapped in certain situations, which Rick was, and he had to break himself out of certain programming to kind of come back to Michonne, which opens up for the next two episodes to just be Michonne and Rick kicking CRM ass. Episode five is essentially Jadis versus Rick and Michonne. It's a fast-paced episode that's both hilarious at times with Rick and Michonne just traveling through the country, confronting idiotic survivors. My only problem with the show, by the way, is there was a point in The Walking Dead around season five, season six, where they tried to make it known to the audience that whoever's surviving out there, the people that are alive out in the wild hanging out, the fact that they're alive, it means they've done some dark, fucked up shit. These are tough, dirty individuals. They have all done the worst things just to stay alive. And they, that was done in the show purposefully. So when we found Alexandria and found people that hadn't been outside, there was a contrast of these people have never had to get their hands dirty. Anybody living outside, they've gotten their hands dirty. Now, even like a decade later in this universe, the survivors they meet outside are some of the weakest, dumbest people. And I, I feel like that's weird that the universe just kind of dropped that aspect. You would think people that have survived this long and have been outside these are some fucked people, man. These are people that have done the darkest shit. And you can make the argument that as the apocalypse has gone on, people have actually become, you know, they got very violent, very mean, but now it's kind of making a comeback where people are like, eh, maybe we should stop killing each other. Maybe we should help each other. But this show just kind of, it's another reason a lot of the, the newer seasons of The Walking Dead have kind of gone the rabbit hole of a lot of the survivors are just dumb and probably shouldn't have survived a decade outside. But either way, I digress. The episode is great. You get a great moment with Jadis where she's fighting Rick and Michonne. You get her death, which is beautiful. They weave in flat Flashbacks with Father Gabriel, which are so well done, and the whole episode was just put together so well, very well written. Jadis gets her send-off, and it's one of the best deaths in the entire series. And then you get the finale. Rick and Michonne decide to go back to the CRM. They decide to get this weird briefing to see what the CRM's been doing. What are they, what are their actual goals? And they decide to fuck it all up before going home. In this episode, the one complaint I'll give about this whole series is I think they may have rushed the CRM story a little bit. In my mind, the CRM, Terry O'Quinn playing. Major General Beale, I thought this was going to be Thanos. This is the end game. This show is going to really set it up, and then at some point, we're going to get like a Commonwealth versus the CRM movie or some shit like that. That, in my mind, was just that that had to be a plan at some point. They were trying to do these as movies at one point, a trilogy of movies. So, in my mind, I'm like, the CRM, there's no way they're going out. This is a huge threat, and I will say, they did the whole story here, and they kind of, I don't want to say rushed it, but they got through it really fast, and it is believable. How they did it was believable, but there was a part of me that wished they kept the CRM and Terry O'Quinn and the threat of it all alive for future stuff. But maybe they have plans to do something else, I don't know. But if it felt like a little, like, after years of building it up for it to go out this way, it's my only complaint about the show. I just think the CRM went out a little too quickly. But either way, Rick gets the briefing from John Locke, and John Locke tells him, hey, we have data that shows that in the next 14 years, all of humanity is fucked, all right? There are hordes of walkers that are creating diseases, that are creating all this stuff, and they are just going to wipe everybody out. It's just, it's going to happen. There is a 1% chance that we survive, and that 1% chance means we have to kill every everybody else in the continent, hoard all the resources, keep it all here in Philadelphia, and maybe we can survive. So because of that, we're gonna go kill Portland, and then we're gonna go across the whole country and kill everybody. You cool with that? And Rick's like, no. No, I'm not cool with that. And they have a fight, and it's actually a really cool scene that calls back to earlier in the season where Major General Beale is talking to Rick and he asks him a question. He goes, I don't even want you to answer me. I just want to look in your eyes. I'll be able to tell. I can tell from your eyes what your answer is. And in this scene, there's a moment after he asks Rick to swear on the sword. Swear that you'll work with us. Swear that you'll be a part of our team. And Rick looks him right in the eyes, and because Andrew Lincoln is such a great actor, he gives him that look. He gives him that fucking red machete look. He gives him the same look he gave Negan in season six or seven when he looked at Negan and he just knew he was gonna he had to kill him and Major General Beale without saying anything he sees him in the eyes and he snaps he's like ah oh, fuck oh shit and they have a fight 
and then Major General Beale dies. That sucked. I don't like seeing Terry O'Quinn die. He's a great actor, and God, the John Locke and Lost is awesome. Go watch Lost. But they kill Major General Beale, and then they have this plan to essentially blow up all the bad soldiers, because the whole CRM's not bad. It's just these elite soldiers, and obviously the general who is now dead, so they just want to blow up the gas, kill all the major soldiers, and then they're going to tell the city about the CRM and what they did, and hopefully make a better place. So they go through with the plan, they blow up the gas, everybody dies except for Thornton, I think her name is, the main chick who's also been a soldier with Rick this whole series. I haven't mentioned her yet, but she's been a pretty good character. She's just this badass girl that came up with Rick. She's an A, which essentially means she's a leader. They have one last fight, it's really emotional, it just shows how much Thornton has been broken down as a human being, that in another world, she's probably on Rick's side, she's probably a good guy, but this world and the CRM has broken her down to the point where she is the enemy and Michonne has to kill her, and she does. Rick and Michonne survive, the CRM is essentially destroyed, the Civic Republic finds out what they did and they said, hey guys, we're not gonna be dicks, we're not gonna kill everybody off, we're gonna be cool, we're gonna send supplies out to everybody, and guess what? You guys can go home! And of course, Rick and Michonne are like, fuck it, let's go home, let's go see our kids, and they go... And we get the final scene we'd all been waiting for. Rick and Daryl reunite! I'm just kidding, we didn't get that scene yet. We also didn't get Rick reuniting with Negan or Carol or any of the characters I really wanted to see him reunite with, but we see him reunite with his kids. We get Kaylee Fleming playing uh, a Judith back again, and him and Judith come together, and they have a very emotional scene where he's like, yes, Judith, Shane, and Laurie's kid, I love you. And then his actual kid, RJ, who's his last living biological son, is there, and he says the line from Interstellar, I knew you'd come back, and, and Rick says, how? Because my dad promised me. He doesn't say that line because it probably wouldn't have made sense, but I'm, I'm willing to bet it was still an interstellar reference. But he says, I believed. I believed. And in that moment, Joe Marchione, this show earned a certified Joe Marchione tier. Why? Why? Why is that scene so emotional? You knew he was going to reunite with his kids. Because something in that moment when his son said, I knew you'd come back because I believed. I felt like him, that character was me. It was the audience, the fan base of The Walking Dead who had been watching this show for years and years and years and who had been waiting for Rick to come back and for so many years kind of came to the conclusion that it might never happen. They might never get to do the movies or the show. It might get canceled. We might just never see whatever they were cooking up back when they wrote Rick off. It might just never happen and we just have to accept that and move on and get with the crowd of people that says, The Walking Dead sucks. Nobody watches The Walking Dead and just be miserable forever. But you know what? We believed and because of that belief, we got this show, and you know what? We said we knew Rick would come back. We knew we would get this show, and they said, how? We believed. We believed the show would happen. It happened. It was amazing. It's so good, and that final scene is beautiful, and that last shot is amazing, and if that's the last shot of Rick Grimes and of this series, I could sleep well. I'm, I'm okay with that. If that is the last we ever see of Rick and Michonne, and that's the last of The Walking Dead, I could take a breath and say, you know what, we didn't get everything we wanted, but you know what, in my mind, I know the character's happy, he's home, and things are well. But, it ain't gonna be the end. I mean, come on, we have the Daryl Dixon show coming out, we have season two of that, which is gonna be starring Carol as well. Of course, there was the tease in the first season of Daryl, where we thought Carol might have been telling Daryl, it's annoying to say their names over and over, we thought Carol might have been telling him over the radio that, that Rick had come back. We heard her say, has come back. We couldn't hear the first word, and Daryl goes, who came back? And we were all like, maybe it was Rick. Well, now we know it was Rick. So obviously when Carol finds Daryl in season two, she's gonna say, hey, Daryl, Rick's back. Which is kind of a shitty way for Daryl to find out. Hopefully they hopefully they find a way to do that better. Maybe maybe Rick goes with Carol to France? I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. But obviously Rick is going to show up. We're going to get some sort of moment with Daryl. Obviously we have to have a moment with Negan and Rick. I'm assuming in the second season of that show, which is coming. I think it just finished filming. We will at some point get a moment with Negan and Rick. And my sneaky suspicion is that at some point all of these shows are going to kind of come back together and combine in some kind of crossover. Whether it's a movie to kind of like tie in a nice bow on the whole Walking Dead universe and finish it off, or whether it's like another seat, like a season 12 of the main show, which would be cool. I think either way, we are going to get something that sort of just wraps the whole thing up at some point. I don't know whether it'll be soon. I don't know whether it'll actually ever happen, but I'm, I'm almost certain that's the plan at the moment. And uh, I hope we see it, but we don't have to see it. And that's what's nice. For years, I said, I hope we see the Rick show. We have to see the Rick show. I don't know if it's going to happen. Now I could say, you know what? I want to see this stuff, but it doesn't. if it doesn't happen, we have this lasting image of the Rick Grimes show, and I'm at peace. I'm happy with it. And thank you, Scott and Gimple, for delivering that to us. We appreciate it. The real Walking Dead fans that never gave this show up and sat through a lot of bad television to get to this point, we earn this. We're happy. We're very happy with this. But I don't know. What do you guys think of the show if you guys watch it? If you don't like The Walking Dead and you watch this whole video, 
How? If you're really into The Walking Dead, though, and you're really excited for this show, you know this one hit, man. You guys know this was a fucking slam dunk of a show. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching me gush this over this show for like 15 minutes. I appreciate it. Please like this video. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. I will see you guys in the next video.